Um, so, hopefully what we're going to do today, or what I kind of hope, is to just sort of have a discussion about how you guys use devlogs. Um, maybe show you a couple, of, or maybe show you how I use it, some of the couple. Um, If you don't maintain a package, I don't think about not maintaining a package, but I'm not here because I'm a package maintainer. I'm here because I want to use that cookie better way, uh, that box better ways. We are, but the scope now is for the package maintainer, as I understood. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's okay. the first start because I think that's what the majority of us are here. And I mean, obviously, if somebody has suggestions for other classes, we should have Alex here to listen to. So. was um, having issues or wanted to be able to only show bugs that actually mattered. Um, and so one of the things you can do currently is if you've got a bug report, so if you look at your package uh, report page, um, you can append pending exclude to the URL equals done. So pmd dash exc equals done, and that will get rid of all the bugs that are marked up. Um, if you're using tag pending, and you, when you make a change in your subversion, you immediately run tag pending or run tag pending soon thereafter. You can also go add an additional pending exclude of uh, pending dash fixed, and that will not show any of the pending bugs. So with those two additions, the done and the pending fixed, and I'm seeing that I'm probably going to have to write it in the wiki so that it sees it. And hopefully in the options screen I'll add it to, it's not there already. Um, you'll be able then to restrict yourself to the class of bugs that you're most interested in. Um, another thing you can do is if you append ordering equals age, then you can sort from the last response to the uh, most recent response. And so because we now also split out won't fix bugs, <coughs> pretty much the top bug on there should be is the high severity, the bug that you talked about the least or talked about uh, a long time ago. And so those may be the bugs that you want to send a message uh, again to as a maintainer saying, yeah, I'm going to fix this, or maybe you need to mark it one fix or help or something else. Um, so that's kind of how I personally use the BTS. Um, I guess, I guess can every, so can everybody get to the BTS now? Or are we still playing with BCP? I can. We do have wired in this room. Uh, Mike, I'd sure sure offer my cable, but it's not long enough to work. If you don't, you won't. Okay. <laughs> this is the MAC address of the AP in here that works. Or not the MAC address, the, the, uh, the AP. This is back to the AP in here that works. We are geeks, aren't we? Huh? We are little geeks. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
a lot. Okay, so um, beyond that, I, I guess we could just go around and see what are the current problems that people have with the BTS. I mean, there's a whole lot of bugs that are open against bugs that are close to bunch of them, but there's still a lot of them that are open. Um, so, I mean, the current thing, what's the current most craptacular thing about your workflow in regards to the BTS that you don't like? You can just go ahead and yeah, start. Yeah, well, I work a lot on even in you, mm -hmm. and we have a user tag for our bugs, and I report quite a lot of bugs related to even in you. And I don't know, don't know if it's a lack of documentation or my knowledge, but I would really like to be able to report a bug and tag it with my use tag with the same message. Instead of having to like send a message, went, wait for 20 minutes, and then tag it when I got the number. Right. I, I can do that. Hmm? And if you put user tag in the report, the, they will be tagged with your user tag. Okay, so is it a lack of, lack of documentation or is it just my knowledge? Yeah, there's a mail from, yeah. from HK or David Devel announced probably a good documentation for that. Mm -hmm. well, that's not for me. Uh, I, I don't know if the fact that pseudo tags set user tags is documented. In fact, I don't know if it actually works that way. Well, right. If you go to the... I've heard that it works. You can yeah, add well. user... Yeah, I could have added it at one point. I just don't remember. <laughs> the 4, let's see, uh, 4, 2, 4, 1, 7, 4. Is about reporting against one of my package and have a user tag in the report. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, it does do it. I think you added it during the last step or so. Yeah, it could be. I, I would like to, to uh, search all the, all the bugs with the same user tag. I'm not think it's possible now. Ah, so you want to return the list of bugs which uh, with are the same user tag? Yeah, yeah, without having to specify any other things? Yeah, probably a mass, a mass, a file is fast. I don't know if it's called English, but the, the mass facts have the same user tag. I want to see how other bugs fix it. So I want to see all the bugs. So you, you want to search? User tag. Yeah. So, um, okay, I'll definitely make sure that you can do that. I mean, there's, that's pretty easy because the user tags, the way they're stored is totally separate. Mm -hmm. So it's just a file that lists all of them. Um, yeah, but there is not an option to be... Right, to be uh, so what, what may be good is just to make the user tags clickable. So you can just click on the user tags, and if you swipe one, that's where it'll go. All the bugs. Sorry, many user tags. Click on, so it'll link it. So when you look at, or find a bug with that user tag, you can click on it and... Click on the... Oh, okay, but it's not an option today. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, yeah not an <coughs> option. Cool. Yeah. Uh, with the version block tracking we have now, it would be nice if you had a simple drop down box like we have on package dev and org uh, to select for which distribution you want the bugs listed because currently the interface for that is kind of involved. Yeah. Okay. The, the, the interface as general is very confusing and will be uh, nice to be sanitized, it, for example, by distribution, by severity, and, uh, in a very uh, friendly, the uh, friendliest way that with the filter, which yeah. is very un unfriendly. The, yeah, the problem is, is that it, it's. I mean, I agree that it's not friendly now. We've got two separate things working together. I don't know which way to go necessarily to make it more friendly because. At one hand, it has to be searchable by users, mm -hmm. and the other hand, it has to be searchable by maintainers. So, make two pages. One, um, a basic interface for users and a um, um, kind of expert interface. Yeah, well, it would, I hope that has all the options that uh, people who really know how the BTS is structured. I mean, what, what it could be is just having it so that the pages are cut, one version is cut down, and another version shows it all. But one of the things that I was planning on doing or hopefully in the future is having cookies. So that yep. you could say, hey, I'm a maintainer for these packages. Do not, uh, I only want to see the whether I've marked them done or not for these packages. All the packages, my default distribution is unstable. Only show me the view from unstable. Uh, another, and another approach would be put different backgrounds for different distributions or something like this. Something where I can visually distinct very quickly uh, the bugs for each distribution. Oh yeah, that's 
bug scan that does that, I mean, to some extent. So, I mean, but if you're asking for a best concept for mm -hmm. a toggle switch. Uh, no, what he's asking for on the display list of, display list of bugs, having like a different background color or yeah. different distributions that the bug, the, the bug applies for. But since a bug can apply for multiple distributions, and that's, yeah. I'm not sure that that's really doable. Yeah, what, I mean, what, what, what you could do is something like that. Just says this a bug applies to this uh, set, and you make uh, and you make uh, it always takes the same color for stable test and unstable. But you can see, oh, this is now just marked with a stable and unstable uh, color, or with all three colors, or something like that. Well, we that could, could work. Well, we could just do do exactly what bug scan does now. Have a little box that says best T U E. You can cut even colors of boxes. It's too expert. The, the problem is, though, is if we have one thing where if we we have to reduce the amount of information or condense the amount of information, and we can expand back out of that. So the thing is that S T U E doesn't really tell you much. It only tells you if any version is buggy in stable testing, uh, unstable or experimental. Basically, I would prefer to see if the source version is buggy. Hmm? What's but I don't know what the first version is. The source version. It's source, source version. Source yeah, version. But, what, but there's multiple source versions in multiple architectures. No, if you say it's buggy in unstable, it doesn't necessarily mean the source is unstable. It could just mean that one architecture didn't keep up. But. Uh, so you you're talking. Just don't care about this. The, the, so you, you're there's multiple source versions in unstable. No, multiple binary versions. But no, no, there are multiple source versions in unstable. There have to be because otherwise. But okay, that's a multiple version of binary packages. Of course, that have different sources. Uh, yes, but you could easily have multiple source versions in unstable as well, because you don't forget we don't necessarily distribute exactly the same version. At exactly the same time, because the build fees are gone. Yes, so, so, uh, as I said, and I'm only I'm uh, most interested to see only some it, most used I, versions. I think yeah. he wants he only wants to know about the ones that if you get source, apply to that source. Well, but that depends on what architecture you're running. If you no, your up get source is always the same. Depends. Well, that's always the most recent version that's yeah. in that yeah. distribution, which is the most. Relevant for uh, uh, yes. Hmm. I know that it's, it's yeah, a bit different. It's basically, basically, something like a most recent only or something like that option. So it's of be because we have hidden that uh, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of the use cases where you would care about that. And the use case that you would care about that is when you're the package maintainer. No, or if, when you're a release manager. Or when you're do QA. But if you're the release manager, though, you care. But I don't. Or you have other tools to. But basically, I don't really care because I have your own tools that are just adjusted in that way. But. <laughs> well, but you care. But I'm, I'm trying to think about the general case. In, as a release manager, you care about all the architectures in the suite. That no, you, 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 you look at build daemon uh, data for that. When you when the architecture is lagging, you look at build daemon data. You don't look at the bug tracking system. I have for each package I have because it's not a sync. I have, I have for my I have on the page what the build daemon is there. So, so that I can just jump to the build daemon log and the status and the vanna build. Uh, but I don't care for if the bug is fixed or not because it's basically it's, it's not fixed the testing. <coughs> In both releases, the build demons are not there at all. I think we should really focus on the interface for uh, users and package maintainers because the release maintainers have such uh, advanced and special that so they really know special. the bug tracking system so well enough game. that um, the best. I mean, the interesting thing and where the most improvements can be done for most people is really the package maintainer, the general package maintainer, and the users. So let's focus on that uh, in this book. <laughs> no, that's for the package maintainer. I would also not really sure. be interested in bugs that are fixed, uh, that have already been uploaded. Yeah. Uh, because exactly. if, if an architect's lagging, I don't care. Right. That's so it's itself. Yeah, and, and that's when you want the view out the distribution equals unstable. You just want the whether you've marked it done or not, whether yeah. a change log has been uploaded that closed uh -huh. the bug. 
that's what you want to see. Okay, so okay. that should be an option in that drop down right. uh, list that we talked about earlier, yeah. basically. Actually, and for users, you should select whatever they run. Actually, I think, yeah. I think, we, I think basically, it should be better if main would be interested in what does the buckling system think that's fixed and unstable, because if they have accidentally moved an MMU, uh, they would, wouldn't see the bug reappear again if they only ask what's now as Mark has done. Uh, the, if you look at, if you always take the latest unstable version, then you would really see the correct view. <laughs> yes. You would see it get it reopened. That's what you want. No, actually, one of the great features of bug like, of version second is they don't need to reopen a bug if you, if you, cut, it, if you cut the version out. Yeah. And that's something that's the default view for the maintainer should support. So that not, not only we sometimes like to see and say, oh, you just forgotten to keep that fix in, but also the maintainer sees it on his mm -hmm. page. Yeah, that's true. Okay. What else? Uh, I really would like to have some help in creating. So um, I think there is a um, some of the project which is being developed in a creating interface, which makes it easy to forward back to our stream. But I don't know if we can have some help on the debug side too. Like, if I have a web page with like 200 bugs and I need to forward 50 to upstream, it's, it's really painful to, to write 50 email. And I would like to have, I don't know, some kind of templating. What you can do right now with just, um, it, I mean, it, it, it's already existing in the upstream's BTS. You can just go BTS forward bug number URL comma BTS or whatever forward. You don't need to actually send emails to do. I mean, you can send one email to okay. do all 50 bugs or all 200 bugs if you wanted to in a single shot. Okay. Single note. Yeah. It is documented in server control. Bug slash server dash control documents the full control command. I think one interesting way for, for user, if you take a user and you want to know about, you want to view a package's bug list, there's mostly two things you want to know about each bug, whether it applies currently to the version you are using now. Like I run unstable power PC and I want to see whether it applies there, and whether it has been fixed at all somewhere. So that if there might be somewhere else a version that's fixed, for example, I run testing and the unstable one fixes it. So you want to show uh, the open bugs and also uh, <coughs> highlight after it or state in the bug list whether the bug has been fixed somewhere. I don't really think it's currently viewable or. Well, it, it is. Um, not very obvious, but the case is that if a bug has the done flag set, mm -hmm. so if you see done by so and so, it's been fixed somewhere. Yeah, but that's not really obvious to users. Maybe it would make sense to make the user interface much clearer, like open bugs and then notes this has been fixed. I mean, meanwhile, in unstable, by the way. Or, um, <laughs> maybe what we need is for users is some sort of introductory. Like into what? introductory documentation, oh, okay. it's like a bug, a select bug People pulled out. Read documentation. No, nobody reads documentation. Yeah. You know, it's really you, what, what, you, what you could do is <laughs> put the it, it's <laughs> been applied to make it look insane on the page and any documentation so for more than the people. Or something like, is it to say, what does this mean? Or something like that. But people don't need documentation by itself usually. The people yeah. who, who do it already can work with BTS as it is mostly. There are certain features that aren't documented yet, but it's getting better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, well, the, what I was thinking about though is maybe just because that is something that's viewable on the, the bug. So you, if you take one bug, just the frame, and just have one page that said for introductory users, this is what this means, that means, and the other thing. Because we have, I mean, almost every bug that you view in package report has exactly the same format. We could take one example and explain it all a little bit too. You, you could also add little question marks in the various places. If you click on the little yeah, um, more JavaScript, like this. opens up text that explains it more. Probably a lot of work, but it improves the ability. Because yeah. users are about getting the information as fast as possible, not really reading what's there ahead of time. There was an excellent uh, slide I read about users and how they use a UI, and they basically they go through what they think will get them to what they want 
see and if it doesn't, they go back and put in something else. So they're all about end results. You're not necessarily reading ahead of time to figure out how to use it. Yeah. So what else for maintainers? Uh, I would like, uh, uh, I know this possible, Lightpark has something incredible who is attached with upstreams uh, bugs and um, you can uh, uh, associate the bug to upstream bugs. Yeah, so when... Well, uh, sorry? BTS link. BTS link. Does Yeah. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's not like official uh, debugs with the work of user tags. Uh, it's maintained by who again? Uh, yeah, yeah, who's into it? Ah, right. Thanks. Uh, and with user tags, you can set, for example, for a couple of the common bug tracking systems like Bugzilla, you set the URLs. And whenever, for example, on the upstream bug tracker, there's some status changes, then user tags will get set on the package. So you can see uh, upstream confirmed or upstream uh, resolved or upstream this. Um, it's with user tags outside of the otherwise outside of the bug tracking system. The name is BTSD. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. But it should be, of course, incorporated properly, documented so that users know oh, how to make it easier for them. To use I, it. I think there was like recently some messages about it being documented a little bit. Yeah, I, think that so. what? I mean, I, I, I basically made sure that I don't break it for it and fix a couple things, but no. I'm not ter terribly involved in the BTS thing stuff. Maybe it would be good to incorporate the documentation on, uh, on Bugs or Debian, and though, even though it's not actually implemented on Bugs or Debian. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's definitely possible. Yeah, speak, um, one of the things that I kind of get the idea is that the documentation for developers is kind of strewn about um, there. One of the things that I, I don't know how to do yet is how to structure it in a way that makes sense to developers. You know, probably most of, or some of you know exactly where all these tags are documented, where all the control messages are documented. Some of you do not. Um, so that's something that maybe if, if you're one of the people who doesn't know, that if you look at it and see if you can come up with ideas um, to rearrange it so that it would be uh, slightly more logical in its presentation. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, all the messages about status changes, like you know, like that and this and close and reopen, all that. Could they have like the date? Oh, yeah. yeah, that's one of the changes I made uh, a couple months ago. They, they now tell you exactly in GMT when that change happened. I don't do translation to your local time zone, but because... No, GMT will be. But, be, yeah, because it's... I just want to know, like, you know, this book was closed and then reopened, but, like, how long was that? Did that happen? Yeah, um, it wasn't in included before in the control message. I mean, it's obviously in the headers of the email. Yeah. So you could click there and figure out exactly what it was. Yeah, but it I have to like browse through headers. And <laughs> yeah, it sucks. <laughs> um, but now it's actually, every control message includes the epic time. So you can, it, it just displays it now. <clears throat> Is there any, sorry, sorry. Yeah, the, I'm, it's becoming more and more common for people uh, particularly the release managers, to uh, change things about bug status, tags, and the like um, with BTS and insert a comment um, with a backslash uh, pound sign, here's why I'm doing this kind of a comment. Uh, those, those are in the bug tracking system if you click on show the text of the message that changed the status of the bug, but they're not anywhere that the average user knows how to find them, and I've seen several people be very confused with why did you downgrade my bug without putting in any explanation of why? Well, there is actually an explanation, it's just you don't order for it. Is there any way we could lift the comment of one of those things up to the main page so you can just see the comments? Yeah, um, it, I mean, it is possible. The problem is, is that it's really a pain. I think for that, it's better practice to, you know, send it's an actual message to the user of the bug. The, the, yeah. the, the problem is, though, it, it when, depends when, on actually doing so. 
Yeah, well, then when, when, when Steve is like triaging, you know, 500 bugs, I'm not sure that I want him to spend the time writing individual messages. Well, it's not just a matter of writing the message, it's just a matter of CCing the bug to yeah. end control. Yeah, the yeah but message. that when you use the BTS command, you... It doesn't it do it. Do do BTS can do it. So you actually need to fix the BTS command. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know, that'd probably be annoying, though, because yeah. then all this prep to well, which Don's trying to get out of, out of the default use. Yeah, yeah, and perhaps what would be useful is in the case where, where, there's a, where there is, where there a, is a comment. Yeah, yeah, it's only the comment that we care about, really. Okay. And, and then maybe but just... Not too <laughs> yeah, and one of the things, too, that I, I'm trying to do is to pull out more and more of the control commands so that you can now run in the subject or the book. You can't do it now, but in the future, in the pseudo headers of any message, you'll be able to alter the control status. Uh -huh. So you can just send a message to the bug. Um, what, what annoys me is that when a bug is reassigned, only the original maintainer uh, for the package uh, that the bug was against gets the message. Perfect. And not yes. the <laughs> guy that the bug is reassigned That's to. Also, yeah, that is definitely right. Yeah. Uh, so you basically also have, always have to CC package uh, at packages that in org to make sure that the other maintainer gets it. Yeah. Uh, and knows that he actually has a new bug to look at. Right. Uh, I always try to do that because I think without that, just a control message is not enough to get involved in yeah. uh, a bug. So well, especially too, because you usually only get the control act yes, for the second yeah. maintainer. Yeah, uh, and that's part of the problem is because the way the way they're processed right now is control messages are totally separate from other messages. And hopefully when I finish or at least get farther along with abstracting out more of the control messages, you'll be able to use a reassign pseudo header mm -hmm. to to do that. Are you going to pension up control entirely then? Or well, uh, control is still going to, as far as I'm concerned, it needs to be there and it's going to stay. But what I'm just going to do is the bits of control that reassign the bugs or change severity, mm -hmm. I'm going to rip out into the module so that I can call the exact same code path okay. from, um, from the process, which does the bug number stuff, and service. Um, uh, that's how I implemented the And you're then going to say, okay, if uh, control receives a bug that was also CC'd to the bug itself or sent to the bug itself, I'm going to ignore the CC to control. Um, what I'm probably going to do is do it so that it's only does pseudo headers. And um, so, mm. so that it has to look like a pseudo header in order for. I so that if you use the current format, you're still, uh, you would still get the current behavior? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I, may, I may do it so that I, I have to think about it. Exactly. It would be so nice if the current structure would be supported as well, so that people don't have to switch their way of working. And everybody would get the same behavior, basically, because otherwise you, you, you still have it is a possibility to maybe allow, well, maybe to allow a header of something to be set in um, the mail, like an X step bug center. <coughs> now, I'm trying to get, what I want to avoid is the case that all messages get control parsing. Because the way it works now is if the first line doesn't look like a pseudo header, first real line, um, it says, oh, there's no pseudo headers, and it parses it. Whereas control, you send a message to control, it tries to find a control message for five times and then it stops. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of, I want to get, I want to avoid having the case where you um, automatically get uh, control act back. That, that type of act that says, oh, well, your message to the bug was a command. No, that wasn't a command either. Mm -hmm. No, that wasn't a command. Because yeah. that would suck to get that back. So you get an act and a control act every single minute, which would be annoying. So I think maybe a header or something. If you didn't use pseudo headers in the first line, maybe a header that said, hey, I'm using the old control syntax or something would work. Uh, that's something to think about and match out. Even if I do it wrong the first time, you always change it. Is it being considered to actually make bug submitters uh, get like all the mails of bugs? 
someone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> it's like one of the things yeah. that's like so that's one of the freaking out everyone who didn't know the book system in advance. Yeah, that's one of the things that kind of needs to be thought out. And um, I think the idea was at some point to subscribe the submitter to the bug list by default. Isn't that like a gross I egg, actually? You can't, can't, do, can't well, just do two different ways of submitting bugs? Well, no, the, I mean, I don't know whether I'm going to actually do it by using the submitter list, but to have them set up so that they're always getting the mail by default, yeah. and have it so that they can opt out of that mm -hmm. list. Because there's, I know there's submitters who do not want to receive additional mail. Yeah, and also when you are basically the maintainer of the package yourself or your team maintainer, yeah. set of <laughs> uh, you you are already getting the bugs through the team list, probably. So you don't want the private CC as well. So there has to be a good option to, to opt out or yeah, it would just be great to have a second submission of this and one does it this way, the other one does it another way. So you can submit whatever you like. Mm, not quite yet. Yeah, submit five, submit no CC. Well, yeah, I mean, because like right now we have Mator and stuff, but, uh, well, that, but we actually could extend me, but that's not good enough. Hmm. Well, I also see use case of submit quite uh, uh, no mate. Because especially if you do But actually, if you, if, you, if you do mass bucket project, it's always as just you want. Well, yeah, but that you always send it to main only. So main only is fine anyway. Yeah. yeah. It's a bad case where you want, don't want to be the seed and you want, don't want to just want main only. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What I was thinking about maybe just like the pseudo header or something so you don't see Yeah. Because that's easy enough. There's already added to not get an egg on actually submitting. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a real header. Although you can oh yeah, it's a real one. Yeah. I, I, I've changed that too, though. So all the silly real headers, all those silly real headers that you could set, you can also set now in pseudo headers and vice versa. I think. I think it's vice versa. But it's definitely going from you can set deb x dev bugs no cc colon in your pseudo header, and that works. Too. In case you're using a broken yeah. MUA that for some reason thinks you shouldn't set real headers. <coughs> oh, does anybody know anybody who's an administrator at Hotmail? <laughs> no? Okay, sorry. Uh, a recent problem that has come up is apparently Hotmail sending messages that I have totally broken the text plane. I've already gotten two of them. That it's basically they take Just their... Never accept any mail from Hotmail. Yeah, well, and then somebody was saying that I should hack around it. And that was my response, is that, no, I'm more likely to block it entirely. But you should do that than that online, because it's something you can easily check in the NTA. For example, the mail that uses get bounces. Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, I mean... That's something easy to check. If I get more than the current number of examples I have, then yeah, that's probably yes, what's going on. Also, <laughs> as a just night half hour has been mentioned before, um, I'd like to have the link to the page of the bug in every mail related, just so I can click on it instead of copy pasting, if that's possible. Yeah, um, the main thing that's blocking that is currently the way that the every single thing that the BTS outputs is hard coded into the code. And one of the things that's blocking that is, I really, well, assuming I can get it done soon, um, I want to abstract all that out into some sort of templating system, um, probably text template or something easy. And that way, I make that change in one place at that point. All right. And it's it's done. It's That's good. The right, yeah, because now I have to make that change in like 30 places. It sucks. So, speaking of uh, the format of mail messages from the bug system, um, when you close a bug, the mail that's sent out from the bug close always struck me as having odd things in an odd order or something. Yeah. Leave out attachments, please. Usually, you mean, you, you leave out attachments. And usually I want to see um, like the message that closed the bug first, and then maybe the original you, bug as, an, as the second message. You mean in a, in a different order? Does yeah. everybody agree that that should be reversed? Yeah. 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 Okay, good. Okay. Okay. And, I, and, and leave out attachments in the original bug submission. They're included as well, oh. which is totally nonsense. 
Yeah. Mm, yeah. It makes it Sometimes good. all the text is in an attachment. Yeah, but then just make a note say attachment left out now. Yeah. Well, I would actually want patches attached to be included in the In the dumb message? The, no. The no. Closed act? That's no. Is that the submitter? Hmm? It's, uh, we're talking about the closed message that it's sent to the submitter maybe, saying uh, your bug has been closed. Maybe, maybe if. Would it Matt, are you you're really complaining about the case where the attachments are ridiculously big, I assume. Yes. So maybe if well any attachment basically, th th there's no need to, yeah. to have attachments in a dump message. The yeah, submitter that that was on a submitted that attachment. Yeah, the message is just there kind of reminding what the problem was. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we could even yeah. cut very long messages, but that's probably a lot yeah, more involved in the, 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 the submitter and the maintainer already get two different messages, right? The maintainer gets the original bug first with complete headers followed by the message that closed it, and the submitter, I thought, actually did no. already get the closing message first followed by the bug. So I no, I don't remember. The bug is closed if you have those problems. Allow the first a few pages of blurb, and then you get a closed message. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that yeah. Means. But I, I mean, yeah, but I. It, there was definitely some difference in the ordering of the components. The, the problem with the other problem is that Verbi is right at the beginning of the message that goes to the original submitter. Um, there's just a lot of boilerplate there, and I, it, there, I'm, it's not. Sh I'm, I'm just wondering if there's some way of reform reformatting it so that the the whether the maybe making the subject line of the message that closed the bug more obvious. Because right now I think it's like the third line, and there's some text in front of it. it just like there's, it, it feels like it's difficult to tell from that that summary what is going on. Let me see okay, if I can, can find one. Can you give an example? Yeah, let me see if I can go find one. And give another example. The case I'm thinking of is installation reports, where we yeah. uh, like to attach a hardware summary and the syslog, for instance, and whatever. Uh, and it, 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 you don't want them in the in the dumb message. Yeah, well right now the dumb message goes this is an automatic notification regarding your bug report, blah with the subject, which is filed against the package package. Then closed by whoever closed it. And then their explanation is attached below. And if it's unsatisfactory, you shoot somebody. Uh, contact marked by <laughs> by reply to the message. And then the attachments are <coughs> that. So that's how it's done. Closed. Yeah, the submitter closed, we actually don't send the originals. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought the submitter closed yeah, was actually a little bit different. No, it's the maintainer it's closed that has the... No, I'm looking at one right now that I, the bug that I filed, which was closed by somebody else, and it starts off with my... Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird because no, if you're the maintainer, you yeah, can't, like, it's the other way around. Why, why would the maintainer one? But even with the maintainer one, I'd like to see the message to close the bug first. Yeah, right. right. Well, because you, as a maintainer, didn't necessarily close it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, right. the act is different than the, the maintainer. Yeah. As submitter, I sometimes find it annoying that I can't actually see what the bug again was. And the, the yeah. When you submit it, sometimes you add yeah. some people it's submit the title on the bug, so then, then you forget what it's about. It always, and then you the need to go to the submitter act. Yeah, but it's not. It doesn't start at the beginning of the. Uh, yeah, that's the paragraph. Kind of yeah. It, it it would be great to have like a short introduction, white line, uh, number and title of the bug. Oh, okay. Because right now it's yeah. the second line. So I could just do it where it was. Okay. Yeah, but it, I don't know. I don't, I don't have a I don't have a submitter closed that handy so I can look at it. And Tell you exactly what I was seeing, but you can scroll down because the wireless connection was lost. Yeah, that's a first screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the it, it it it's almost like if you make the third line the second line and then add white space and then have the bug yeah. number in the yeah. close, yeah. it would be clear. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Did you get that? So. So if you had just yeah. something like that. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah.
Because people people start read the, one of the things when people read mail messages, they read the beginning of each paragraph. The first line. The first line of each paragraph. And if it's later in the paragraph, they don't even say it. I oftentimes and I really had to look hard to find the the subject of the bug. Okay, so yeah, so I'll, I'll reverse the the same comes for, goes for control confirmations. It would be great if they could start with just bug number, bug title, and then the processing stuff. Okay. Probably do that. Uh, you will remember all of this? He's in many notes. Cut no. <laughs> I <write> the notes. <laughs> One thing, save your file before your laptop crashes like AJ had for his deck book. <laughs> we, we have a day. He has to watch a video to reproduce what was just to notice. A tiny line. Every time I see severity change to blah from that, my mind runs around. Yes. Yes. No one yes. brain. Can we please change this? Severity change from this to that. <laughs> yes. The other way around. Uh, yes. I think it was one of those cases where you did. I or whoever wrote it thought that it, you didn't care what the severity was. <laughs> you wanted to know actually, what it is now. Actually, and all of the signs are a huge. Step forward more that we now know from which severity it comes. So I'm really quite happy in relation to the step four. Every time I'm confused as I read it, and yeah. I read it a lot already. So. Is, it, is it really the wrong way around? Yeah. I agree. <laughs> Seriously. I don't mind about it. I'm trying to remember, it probably is different from the order in which. It's not chronological. It's probably different from the order in which the retitle works. It's and and, and again, you look at... Oh, no. No, the retitle does it to, from. I think, actually, most of them do it to, from. So... Well, the severity is the most weird one. Because then you can't really, really easily see whether it's a severity downgrade or upgrade. And, and you, you look at the last bit automatically. Again, you, you, you skip what's in the middle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The boring stuff. <laughs> no, no, so am I the other way. Okay, well, okay. Does everybody agree that it should go from the two, or do you want it the other way around? Okay, yeah. well, I'm going to standardize all on that. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> because it's both ways, which is complicated. Okay, what else? Uh, something simple, I think, would be, uh, would be nice if the bug uh, supports have um, syndication with RSS, with RSS. Oh, RSS speed for the, for the for yeah. bug log? Yeah. For a bug log? Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing really stopping that. Um, it should be easy, I, I don't know. But the, I mean, the main thing that's annoying about about it is trying to jam a mail message into it, but I can just rip, I already have the stuff to rip out the first body part, whatever that happens to be, um, so I can just do that, so. Uh, In particular, it will be nice to have a um, uh, syndication for the package and for the for a particular bug, so I can subscribe for one particular bug uh, with my blog lines or something like this in an easy way, as just for temporary things. It is a bit unfortunate that like any RSS readers and going to hammer the bug tracking system yeah. because of RSS being a frequently <laughs> annoying protocol. Yeah. Oh, that's going to hammer the BTS. Yeah. Or, or the RSS is not yeah. as full as yeah. yeah. a file. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it might, but if, if, we, uh, if we get a good caching of the stuff done. Uh, this is of course, yeah, yeah well, Caching is basically static files, yes. <laughs> uh, but which is of course not too easy to do. Uh, it's pull the static files are only just too many, and you will generate a lot of them which are just a waste. So, 
Well, I mean, why, why should be static sites? Right? Well, the idea, because the bug pages right now are kind of <coughs> and if you have a gigantic bug log, it takes a while to generate the bug log page. And a package report page that has a thousand bugs in it, it takes a while to generate. Uh, I see. Well, it is, uh, it would be possible to kick the RSS feed users onto a mirror of the BTS. Uh, that's not a problem. I mean, they can compete with each other to hammer the things for the Which what, is what you could also do, um, since you already, already have the mailing list for each bug, um, you can do RSS turn on, email. Well, I'll turn on the archiving for this. Uh, mailing lists and make sure that the mailing list software supports RSS um, feeds from the archive of the mailing list. Then it's all done on the host that does the um, I doubt that, that, that is going to happen. And and I think there's a formalist last time. And, 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 and actually, <coughs> also, I think in that sense, the RSS feed will not be to say, when I just put all the new messages. For example, to say, I want to see any change that happens with bugs to this package. So if a bug is reassigned, I want to see my RSS feed. But Bill, which, which, which isn't so trivial anymore. Well, which needs the real computing and not just some, oh, we can pass, we can get RSS from the, from the bug mailing list. But the, well, the mailing list is just like you get a maintainer. So the maintainer doesn't see the Yes, but perhaps I, I want to co watch it. Well, basically, of course, I use currently PTS to co watch it. But if you, if, I think if we do RSS, we should do it right and not just. So it, it works in some cases. Well, yeah, but if you subscribe to the bug, it'll work. It yes. Yeah. <coughs> That's what you'd be subscribed to. You'd see it resign. Okay, okay. What else? Uh, I found it on. Sometimes the the bug tracking system has but had a denial of service attack from places crawling the packages uh, links. Mainly the packages links. The bugs links usually don't take that long to process, but generally in combination with other things and so on and so forth. Well, that's one thing that I think we're really missing is that we can't we really have to exclude Google from BTS. Yeah, and although well, I, mean, I guess they, they do have the, they do look at the mailing list. So. Well, and they do actually. If you really want to use Google, you can use. Uh, if you put site bugs.darmstrong.com, ah. they have index. Okay. Um, because I don't care if that machine's box well, it's not my problem. <laughs> it works fast enough for me. So um, yeah, so you can do that. And also with the hyper straighter front end, um, it, it has actually, if it, even though it is a little slow, um, it returns within a couple seconds, like 20 seconds at the most. Yeah, so, I, I think the main thing we're missing right now is just all the Basically, we, we, you'd be able to search for a lot of things to get much better results if we do a good index BTS. Because all the links and the bugs would be working, they'd be able to get much better result for you know, any given search for an <laughs> error message or anything. I think it would work better. I'm just guessing. Oh, oh, you're talking about users who are using Google? Yeah, users who are just looking for why am I getting this error message? Oh, yeah. They would, well, get, they would get a link directly to the WBTS for that. It would problem. be nice if the yeah. for that you need to provide a view to Google that doesn't provide like 20,000 different views of the right. package book list, yeah, but yeah, just one. one. <laughs> yeah. Google's sitemap, maybe. Mm. You, you can tell yeah. Google the sitemap yeah. what yeah. sites you have, mm. and maybe you can still say, please don't crawl beyond that. Well, yeah. What we can do too is just do a, a user agent redirect. Redirect based on user agent. Yeah, so I think it may be a little bit more safe. As we mentioned earlier in DevConf, there's apparently oodles of, of Debian folks at Google. Yeah. Maybe one of them would be talk to the search people and figure mm -hmm. out the right thing for us to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's that's so that's so, that's so mail Debian at Google.com and uh, ask them. About I mean, the you know, Google is interested, I guess, in it well because the Debian bug tracking system is a good resource for problems in the free software world. Mm -hmm. So it would be very good for Google as well if they could make use of it in a sensible way. Okay. So I think they, they have interest in cooperating now. I mean, knowing Google's uh, willingness to, to do odd little special cases, it wouldn't. I'd always surprise me if they didn't study just special cases like the Debian bug system. Yeah. 
they have a tendency to do that from time to time. Some of Google is here anyway, so we've yeah. been promoting it lots. So. <laughs> uh, about Hubstripe, uh, the the search field itself. Uh, I asked for docu documentation yesterday they for uh, yeah. updates and so on. I would also like to, to see some documentation for how the search field can be used for AND and OR qu queries and stuff okay. like that. Yeah, HyperStrayer, what I think I'm going to do for most of that is link to HyperStrayer documentation. Uh -huh. Because it's much more, even though it's, I think it's, it was written by some sort of weird English, but uh, <laughs> it, it's at least more understandable than I can do it just by replicating it. Okay. So I think I'll probably link to that and uh, explain what the different options do. If anybody has any comments on how the spam was handled or any uh, spam assassin experts that can help me with uh, certain things, um, I don't know. I'm, the, I'm the one that's been handling all the spam on the bug tracking system lately in the past few years. You should speak with Martin to the, if you didn't do so. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think actually some of this message is going to get together yeah. this year too. Yeah, there's going to be a list master BTS meeting uh, in a few months. Oh, I, there, there's one, para one parameter that I need to tune and I haven't found it yet. Okay. Don't I'm not know. even sure it's variable, so but, but we're running an older version of Spam Assassin mm -hmm. too because Spam Assassin decided to completely change their uh, Perl interface mm -hmm. in incompatible ways. So much of it for obvious, uh, no good reason. But, but ask, ask so he, uh, he does that stuff for his work too. So, yes. uh, so he, he already has migrated parts of Woosmith's work to Debian servers now, <coughs> which has quite much. Yeah. Do you only look at messages once when they arrive, or will you like? Recheck them when you discover a new kind of spam and see if the old messages was kind of like that. Look at them once when they were well. Well, okay. Uh, the automatic system you know, does, does the spam assassins it has cert, some filters other than spam assassin. Does the spam assassin based on the spam assassin score? If the spam assassin score is greater than four, it throws it in the, this is spam folder, uh, yeah, which is over two gigs a day, typically three to four. Uh, and if it's it, less than four, it gets goes on through to the bug or to the, 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 bug pr the control processing or whatever. Then after that, I man manually go through and look at everything that scored between minus one and four. And then clean out, you know, clean out the bugs that had something between that. And I use all of those messages to train the, fil train the Bayesian filters. So something that scores in the middle, you know, it's, you know scores like one, gets, that's, that's not spam, get, gets uh, helped trace the Bayesian filters because you need to balance an amount of spam and ham and, or, or something like uh, 100, 300 spams for every ham in the Bayesian database at the moment. And you know, there's only a few hundred thousand uh, ham, or a couple hundred thousand hams in the Bayesian database. Right. There's millions of spams. Because the reason I'm asking is that sometimes I get uh, spam to a lot of bugs approximately at the same, at the same time with the same subject or whatever, and it came through. They, they get and clicked I, out. And I really, I mean, maybe they the time to actually report that as spam. It is almost all cases that they squirm between minus one and four, and I get to go through all of those bugs and clean them out. 
Which right. gives me good incentive to, to catch it at the early stage if I possibly can. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, there, there was one uh, <laughs> month or so ago where a lot of them scored minus one and a half. Right. And so those are, I'm gradually cleaning out as people report, uh, report this bug has spam. And, well, actually, the, the report this bug has spam does just goes to gives me a list of of bugs that that's that's been done to when I go through those with the same process that I do with the ones that score between minus one and four. Right. Those uh, image link spams that we had two months ago were really fun. Right. <laughs> a couple of hundred in the same day in two waves. A couple of hundred is, uh, there, there have been days when I've gotten 5,000. Yes, I know. I've cleaned them out of the lists. So. <laughs> yeah. We, we are getting a lot better at keeping the lists and to be free of uh, A lot of it is, is, I'm currently unemployed and have the time to, to check it fairly often. <coughs> and we were lucky when I was on vacation for a couple days that nothing, nothing much got through. <coughs> um, yeah, it, 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 if somebody else wants to help with the task, it <laughs> uh, especially if that someone will be in a different time zone, that would be excellent. Yes. Yeah, and I mean, um, patches are always accepted. Well, is it a little more people that have to be white pro for some reason? Anything you should make this acceptance. <laughs> 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 accepted. I mean, but I, I reserve the right to a circular file. Or <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, any other suggestions, comments? Uh, could you make an addition that if a punch, if a bug comes in, it automatically creates a patch that fixes it, and it fixes it. <laughs> <laughs> That would be really useful. Yeah, and that's the upload. <laughs> that means randomly lose 10% of my money. I'm to do that. But. Oh, so this. Oh, yes. Uh, I can remember seeing an interesting bug if I use BTS minus M box. So if I take uh, an M box where the bug title is not non ASCII, it gets false. To check whether that still happens with the current BTS. However, the, oh, the BTS command? Command. Oh, yeah. I need to check whether that happens first. Uh, so, the BTS command, right now, oh, there was a bug a while ago because I changed the way I do URLs and I do them in a totally automatic, well, relatively automatic fashion. You just pass in the parameters and it builds the thing for you. Um, and so it was broken for a while, but it should be okay. But I don't. Well, BTS show is currently still broken. With our next package upload will have a finish for that. Okay. So it was pretty stands. You can always use Git. Fun? Git. And if I need it somehow important, I will always find my bug. Wait, anything else? Oh. oh. Okay, so um, again, if you have any more suggestions, feel free to file bugs. A couple of things we talked about, uh, there actually are bugs already against dead bugs or bugs that they didn't know about it, but it's always okay to file bugs or harassment or IRC, that's fine. Uh, so just let me know what's up. And don't forget to, if um, you're developing stuff that needs to query the BTS, we should probably start using the SOAP interface. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, or you want features that aren't currently enabled, or you want me to show you where the documentation is, what little documentation there is of it right now, um, let me know. And I can go. Cool. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have fun. Thanks.